70, correct. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Oh, you know. No, I, I don't. That's why I've asked you. I'm fine, Roy. Right. What, what can I get for you? Right, well, I suppose in the spirit of a fresh start, I should knock my usual double shot of caffeine on the edge, shouldn't I? Well, might I suggest that lemon and ginger tea? Uh, the ginger has healing properties. Ooh. Healing properties. Well, lemon and ginger it is then, Roy. Right here. You know what? I'm thinking of taking myself off and joining the gym and all. You don't think it'd be too much of a shock to my system, do you? Well, if you're going to go around picking up teenagers, you're going to have to do something. D that's enough, and he's not a teenager, all right? I mean, what do you talk about? Really? I mean, computers, skateboarding... Do us a favour, Rob. Put her back in a kennel. Look, Trace, leave it. Yeah, Trace, leave it. You know, cos when it comes to analysing why two people ever get together, I can't for the life of me fathom what, what he gets out of being with an old, embittered jailbird like you. I'm just saying. Ouch. On the house. You know, now... Come on, then. What happened when you got back to us? Why is everybody so interested? You kidding me? Right, OK. Um, radiator on this is going to need to be drained and flushed cos she filled that up with oil instead of water, thinking it was the engine. <laughs> oh, I felt sorry for it. No, but it was a pretty stupid thing to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, don't mind me. All right. Yeah, never better. I'll put the kettle on. Just talking about a customer. Just took a radiator for the engine. Oh. <laughs> Not as big an idiot as me, then, eh? Oh, I don't know. She's pretty much ruined the rad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Listen, uh, we all do stupid stuff. Yeah, well, anyway, I just wanted to thank you for, you know... No worries. Just in case you're wondering. I would have. I wasn't. Anyway, so... At the end of the day, nothing happened. Nothing's ever gonna happen. And, uh that's the end of the story. I'll see you. Ah, I knew she knocked you back. What? Yeah. Too bad she was hot. Yeah, far too hot for you. <laughs> Two sugars, brew boy. I didn't say that I was a rubbish cook. Yes, she did. She said Mummy either gives me stuff that's out of a tent or from the kebab shop. Well, that is so not true. But it's not my fault, is it? I mean, my mum's hardly master chef, is she? True. Come on, it's something that must have happened. You all right? What can I get your hair of the dog, is it? Don't. Tonic water, please. On its own? Yes, Steve, on its own. Probably wise. I'll get it. Um, a pint for me and a, a red wine for Tracy and all, please. Oh, I wonder why the hairs on the back of my neck had stood up. Where is she? In the loop. So, you're feeling better, are you? Well, it's all relative, isn't it? Mm. Look, Carla, I... I know, it's OK. I've learnt my lesson. It's all right. Believe me. I'm all humiliated out. OK, Can good. Oh, great. So not only did you ruin my night in, but now you're crashing our date night. You can't get one of your own. If I do reach for the bottle, you'll know why. But you won't, though. No. Can't I just have a few for me each in one bag? That's pick and mix. Yeah. We don't do pick and mix. Well, why not? Because it's unhygienic now. Please, just <laughs> choose. Mint Imperials. No. no. Barley sugars. No. no. Oh, humbugs? No. Mint Imperials. <sighs> yeah. Mint Imperials. You sure? Yeah. A pound. Thanks. I'll make sure he only eats one a day. Well, I think the recommended dose is five a day. <laughs> Just a magazine, Norris. Oh, triathlon training. Ah, uh, it's not ready for me. It's for Amwin Roberts. Amwin Roberts? New client. And Northwest Iron Woman champion. I'm trying to bone up on a specialist subject, so... Oh, I see. So you think a cursory knowledge of triathlon techniques may win you a new order. <laughs> I do whatever it takes, Norris. Yes, but, I mean, it uh, can't be easy for you, can it? What? How's that? Well, I mean, you must be under 
a lot of strain, what with a murder investigation hanging over your head? No, not really, no. But, well, has, has, has something happened? Has there been some new information? Norris, can I trust you? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just that I know something that's pretty crucial to this murder investigation. What's that? I didn't do it. It's a guilt lunch. What have I got to feel guilty about? Do I really need to remind you? Please do. Abandoning me to go and babysit your sister? Oh, right, I should feel guilty about that, should I? Yeah, Rob, you should actually, because every hour you spend with her is an hour spent neglecting me. She's stalking us. I've uh, reserved your table in the corner. It's just nice and quiet. Now. Lovely, thanks, Steph. Oh, um, why don't you go and sit down, just get yourself a drink, and uh, I'll be over in two ticks, all right? Hey, you, Ben. Right. Yeah, we're just having a quiet lunch, you know. Do you, uh, do you want to join us? No, no, business meeting. Oh, right, well, uh, best of luck, yeah. Mm hmm Thank you. You see, why did you do that? Do what? Invite us to join us. Well, she was with a client. She was never going to say yes. Yeah, so why do it? Well, to be nice. To be nice. Yeah, nice. Like, you know, helping a friend out or, or taking your girlfriend out to lunch. These are, are nice things. You'll never catch on. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Oh, this. Do you like it? My mum found it. I mean, it was covered in dirt and everything, but it scrubbed up really nicely. Show me. Where'd you find that? It was in the backyard by the privy. Somebody must have been careless and dropped it. But I get a gorgeous new bracelet, so I call that a result. <laughs> you know, the more I look at it, I don't quite like it. I, um, I, I, I think you should hand it in. What? Well, someone's obviously lost it, so... Well, why don't you give it to me? I'll take down the police station. There might be a reward. Uh, no! This is my reward. Find us keepers. What's wrong with you? Nothing. Look, we, we best get a move on, though. I, I don't want to leave the shop for too long. We're having lunch. Yeah, I know we are, but we don't have to take all afternoon about it. We've been here half an hour. <sighs> Everything OK? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Oh, well, that's a nice bracelet. Yeah? Come on, come on, see. Oh, of course you can. Steph, can I get another bottle of Chardonnay, please? Sorry, I'll be back. Are you finished? No. But I'm, I'm worried about the shop. Well, don't be worried. The shop's fine. Sorry about that. Can I see? Well, I, actually, can we, um, can we get the bill, please? Rob. Gorgeous, isn't it? That's mine. <laughs> no, it's not. Where did you get it from? Rob bought it me as a present. Maybe it's um, similar. No, no, that's not similar. That's mine. What shop did you get it from? Oh, look, calm down, love. There's clearly been some misunderstanding because this is my bracelet. But take it off. I can name all the charms on that. No, I won't. And this is harassment. That is my bracelet. I'm sure it is. Okay, is there a problem here? Yeah, Steph seems to have mistaken Tracy's new bracelet for one that she lost. No, somewhere. I've not lost it. It was stolen, and now she's wearing it. There is no way that this is her bracelet because Rob bought it from a reputable jeweler. Well, take it off and let me have a proper look. No, we're trying to have a quiet meal here. Of course you are. Steph, uh, can I have a word, please? Right. Finish that, we're leaving. Well, I'm not going to rush, because then I'm going to look guilty. But you are guilty. Pretty much. I didn't get a proper look, but yeah, I'm sure. Tracy went to prison for murder. Are you serious? Yeah. Got out on some technicality and Rob's been to prison and all. I need to call the police. So you're right. Do you want me to do it? I can make a phone call. I know. All just... oh, right, I can just, I can handle it. Just back off, all right? I was only trying to help. Luke, if I want your help, I'll ask for it, yeah? <laughs> what did I do? Oh, it probably just brought up stuff about Tina's murder. Yeah, she was really shook up by all that. It's tough enough for her just going back into the flat. Think she'll be all right? Can you take my ticket for the stop, guys? Yeah, could, could love it. Just best sticking around, keep an eye on her. You're a good bruv. Yeah. But I know it's not yours. There must be a million bracelets like it. Well, maybe so, but she lost one and you found one. Doesn't that seem like just a, a bit of a coincidence to you? Well, she can't prove it's hers. Look, look, why did you tell her that I bought it? Because if I told her that you'd found it, then she would think it was hers. Well, she already thinks it's hers. The question is, what's she going to do about it? That girl was pushing her luck. Look, look, just will you give me the bracelet? 
and what you're going to do with well, it. Give it here, will you? Well, I won't wear it well, round here, Just, that? Just give it to me, Tracy. Rob, you are overreacting. It's fine. <laughs> Tracy Barlow and Rob Donovan. Guilty as charged. Bad joke. I'm DS44, this is DC Vanna. Yeah, we know who you are. Of course you do. Do you mind if we ask you a few questions? Of course not. Go ahead. We're following up inquiries about a stolen bracelet. Oh, well, we know where this has come from. Uh, Tracy. There's been a misunderstanding. The waitress down the road, she saw the bracelet and she thought it looked a bit like hers. It isn't. She's wrong. Some people just like to make a fuss. Is that the bracelet? Yeah. Maybe have a look at it. Oh, all this fuss over a silly charm bracelet. Surely you've got more important things you should be doing. Do you have the original description? Yep. See, we have reason to believe that this bracelet was stolen from Tina McIntyre's flat the night she was attacked. Would you know anything about that? You're looking for a bargain? Oh, no, no they're, they're, they're being interviewed by the police. You are? The, 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 Tracy Barlow and Rob Donovan. You, you can't lip read, can you? You really got nothing better to do than poke your nose into somebody else's business. I'm a concerned citizen. You're a nosy Parker. I... Go on, shoe. Well, Go on. Quick. I just wish I knew what was going on in there. You're as bad as him. They've got my bracelet. In fact, I'm... Oh, but the police said to wait. They'll give you a chance to identify it later. But they're in there now, so Stay. why do I wait? Don't you have to go to work? Just, just watch. I told you, some people just like to cause a fuss. I tried to stop her. Can you wait outside, please? That is my bracelet. This is not the way we do things. Well, I think you should arrest her. Look, right. The teapot, that's what my mum got me, because I always used to make her a cup of tea. Um, the star is what my drama teacher gave me, because I was an eater in West Side Story. And... Oh, there's, there's one missing. The top hat. The top hat's missing. Look, you can see where it's broken off. And the top hat was on the bracelet before yes. it was stolen? Yes, it was on the bracelet. And you've absolutely no doubt that this is your bracelet? This is definitely my bracelet. And you claim that Mr Donovan bought it for you as a present? That's what she said. So where did you get the bracelet, Mr. Donovan? I'm waiting. It's not a difficult question. I didn't exactly um, tell the truth about where I got the bracelet. Really? Rob didn't buy it for me. So where did you get it? It's a long story. Here you go. Go on. Do you are brew? Yeah, please, dear. Tea'll be ready in half an hour. She's dragged me twice round the red wreck. I don't know where she gets the energy from. Tracy, Rob, I hope that's you coming in for your tea. I've made a big cottage pie. We've got visitors. Oh, it's not that big. Mrs Barlow? Yes? We'd like to ask you a few questions, if we may. Sorry if this is an inconvenient time. What sort of questions? Have you seen this before? Um, yes, I found it in the backyard by the ginnel. Well, Eccles found it. Eccles? The dog, I told you. And you gave the bracelet to your daughter? I cleaned it up and she took a shine to it. Look, I've told you all this. So what's so special about a charm bracelet? It's not exactly the crown jewels, is it? The bracelet was stolen from Tina McIntyre's flat the night she was attacked. What we want to know is how it managed to find its way into your backyard. Who lives in this house? All of us here. Dog. You're not going to take Eccles into cost today? No, but we will need a detailed statement from everybody. Yeah, the works. Number one, Coronation Street, Weatherfield. Quick as you can. We're going to conduct a full forensic search of the Genel Yard in the house. I'm sorry, but you can't remove or touch anything. In fact, it might be better if you find alternative accommodation for the duration of the search. You mean we have to get out of our house? Exactly. But where will we go? Friends, neighbours. There's a couple of very reasonable B&Bs on Tile Street. But this is our home! We're investigating a murder. Look, don't worry, ma'am. We'll sort some out. Sorry, is this something you want to say to me? Not yet. Look, how, how long is this going to take? It takes as long as it takes. Did you have plans? No. What? Well then, quite a night in. A few drinks. Crisps. Popcorn. Maybe even watch a DVD later. I'm fine, honestly. Never said you weren't. I thought you was going to the stock cars. Changed my mind. Gave me tickets to Tyrone. 
Okay, I don't need babysitting, so... We never said you did. We've got nowhere else to go. So? Well, it's like you're stuck with us. I'm sorry I told the police you bought the bracelet. But, Rob, there's somewhere else. Do you promise me you won't be mad? What? I put some of Tony's dodgy gear in the shop. You what? I I'm told sorry, you. I'm sorry. We've just had the police in there. They're only interested in the bracelet. Listen, we'll be fine. They just want to find out who killed Tina. They're not bothered about stolen goods. Let's go to the pictures, yeah? Hey? We'll see a movie. Take Amy. Rob, it's serious. Well, what can we do? Well, nothing. But it's but... too late. If they come, they come. And all I fancy right now is just, just a, a big bag of popcorn. Me, you and Amy, all right? Yeah, but... We deserve a treat, OK? It just does. Let's, let's just go and forget about all this for a few hours, please, yeah? OK, then. She's only a small dog. She's no trouble. Well, I wouldn't like the police rummaging about in my house. I didn't really have a choice. It's still a murder investigation. Well, I'd have let you stay here, but with Chocker, what, with Steve and Michelle and yeah, Amy? Yeah. I, I've got Rob and Tracy, so... You see, and, and uh, Emily gets very highly strung if she's out of her routine. Yeah, don't worry, I'm sure Peter will find us somewhere. Anyway, these are on the house. Thanks, Liz. So, uh, tell us a bit more about this bracelet. Well, it looks like whoever dropped the bracelet by the gate is the same person who killed Tina. Thanks for the drinks, Liz. Leanne saw me on the balcony. I mean, then they carted me straight off to the police station. I didn't have time to steal or get rid of anything. Anyway, if anything, that bracelet proves that I didn't do it. In, in that case, there's, there's only one suspect. Yeah, lovely. OK, that's great. Thanks. Bye. Cheers. Cheers. So, put this into the Bella Vista. Lovely view of the gas works. Two rooms. Dogs are welcome. Well done. Are you OK, Deirdre? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Just been chucked out of my house and discovered I'm part of a murder investigation. Well, I don't know, but I suppose the police are only doing the job, eh? How did that bracelet finish up in our backyard? Don't know, I've no idea. Really? Yeah, no idea. Peter, look at me. What? I want to help you. I really do. But you have to tell me the truth. What truth? You were the last person to see Tina alive. You've been living in my house. Please, tell me the truth. Did you kill Tina? Stay in yours. Here. Is there something you want to say to me, Norris? No. no. Right. Oh, and just in case anybody else is wondering, I didn't, I repeat, I didn't kill Tina. She was such a lovely girl. Yeah, she was. And she was beautiful. Mm. Yeah. You know what, if I was gay, which I'm not, but if I was, I'd fancy her. <laughs> what about you? Yeah, I fancied her. Yes, I know, but no, if you was gay, who would you fancy? But I'm not. But if you were... Ronaldo. <laughs> who lives on the street? Jason Grimshaw. Oh. Mm. OK, I'll go. Who'd you fancy? Right, I'll promise you won't laugh. Promise? I'd say Carla. You're not the only one. Give over, eh? <laughs> no, I don't. I just think, I just think she's dead classy. Uh, not so classy when he's around. <laughs> hey, she's not had an easy time of it. Are you okay? Steph. My bracelet, something that I've had my entire life, is evidence to the murder of one of my best mates. My bracelet. Yeah. Do you remember when she told us about the friend and the married man? Yeah. 
<laughs> Took me forever to get her to admit that was her. Well, you knew from the beginning? Yeah, pretty much. I just didn't know it was Peter until, you know. Until what? Until near the end. I just keep going over and over everything that she said in my mind. There must have been a clue in there. That's the police's job. It's not yours. Yes, but I was living with her. I was closer to her than anyone. There must have been something, something I could have done. Yeah, you did. You told her to end it. But she was always going to do what she wanted to do. Don't keep beating yourself up. It's not your fault. Look, I'm going to have to get off. I need to get Joseph. I said I'd be there half an hour ago. You walk over. No, it's fine. It's still light. Yeah, walk her. I need some more crisps from the shop. Will you get me some chocolate? Yeah, no problem. All right, see you later. Trace! No! Trace. I, I want to see what they're doing! Oi! I hope you're not making a mess in there because that's my mum's house. Just leave it, yeah? Yeah, plenty of milk for your cornflakes. Yeah, well, thanks for putting us up. They look busy. You know, I really wish my mum hadn't found that bracelet now. Yeah, well, I'm glad she did. With a bit of luck, it means once and for all they'll be able to prove who killed Tina. Simons, and yet it's as stiff as a board. Yeah, well, it would be being solid brass. We appreciate you letting us stop over, don't we? If they're still there tonight, we are going to a hotel. I just don't understand what they think they're going to find. Yeah, well, whatever it is, I hope they find it quick. I need to get back on with my life. I think about having my post redirected to the police station. Yeah, well, you think you've got problems. Me and him have got a wedding to organise, haven't we, babe? Yeah. Oh, this is so typical of Tina. I mean, she's dead and buried, and she's still a pain in my flaming neck. Like, literally. That's enough, all right? All right, Marty, I'm trying to have a laugh. Maybe I'd hold off on buying the dress yet, love. You all right? No. The B&B was shocking. I've been scratching like a scrapyard dog all morning. I tell you, the bed could have made itself. It were alive. Well, hopefully they'll let us back into the house today. Oh, God. You know, part of me is dreading that. The thought of strangers turning over our things. Ken would have been horrified. They'll be wasting their time and ours. I mean, whoever killed Tina must have dropped that bracelet when they were running down the ginnel and then, I don't know, somehow somebody's kicked it under our gate. Well, I did try to tell them that. Oh, they don't want to believe that, though, do they? That's not their preferred theory. Which is what? Which is I killed her. You know, I'm going to have to go and talk to Simon about this, try and reassure him. Peter, I'm sure Simon thinks you're innocent. Well, it's more than you do, anyway. Oh, no, no, I was... No, it's all right, don't, don't worry about it. Why should you believe me, anyway? Why should anyone? What do you want? Oh, I just, uh, I just, if it's all right, I wanted to have a quick word with Si, you know, about what's happening over the road. Yeah, I noticed you had visitors. Yeah, they're following up some lead. But I, I swear to you, Leanne, uh, it's not going to lead to me. He's terrified you're going to end up inside. No, 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 that, that's not going to happen. And if it's OK, I'd like to tell him that myself. Oh, I, I don't know, Peter, he's confused enough as it is. Just let me put his mind at rest, then. Come on, surely that's best for all of us. All right, but if you need to back off, you back off, yeah, understand? Sure, of course. I don't want any more upset. No, I know. OK. Si! Hey, here he is. Hey, fella. Oh, look at that. County 9, Villa 1. That'll be on the back pages tomorrow, that, eh? So, how have you been? Huh? Oh, right. That good, eh? And how you feel? Listen, your mum was telling me that you saw the police over at Grandma Deirdre's, and I know that you... you must have heard some things. I mean, you know, some bad things about me. Yeah. I know I've made some mistakes, but I would never have hurt Tina. I never would have, because I cared about her the same as you did. You all right, Si? I'm OK. Just put that down, please. Look at me. 
You've got nothing to worry about, okay? Whatever people say, I am innocent. Okay? And the police will find that out, and they'll find the person that killed Tina, and they'll go to prison, not me. Do you promise? Cross me heart. Your dad's not going anywhere. Not now, not ever. Thank you. My boy. Do you know, I was always hoping you'd be musical. Well, I played the recorder at school. Yeah, not so as anybody would want to listen. Oh, charming. I remember you had tears in your eyes when I played hot cross buns at the school assembly. Yeah, me and everyone else. Hey, I was thinking, maybe I should book some musicians for the wedding. You know, something dead classy like a harpist or a string quartet. Well, why not the Halle Orchestra and I've done? We haven't got the money to splash out on a flaming harpist. Hmm. Well, they can't be that expensive. Oh, you haven't got a clue how much they cost. Yeah, well, I could soon find out on the web. It's like quicker than you find me the price of that toaster. But I'm doing it. Babe, you've been on go slow all day. Yeah, well, I slept on the settee last night. I'm tired, all right? None of us got a decent night's sleep. Let's not fall out, eh? Ah, have you finished over there? Can we go home? I'm afraid not, Mrs Barlow. We need to talk to all of you We've again. We've answered but, but, all your questions. This is, just this let is talk, harassment. Just let talk, yeah? Thank you. There have been developments. We've recovered the missing charm from Miss Britton's bracelet. She's identified it for us. So where was it? In the yard or in the ginnel? It was in your outhouse, Mrs Barlow. So you've no idea how the charm got there? Absolutely none. We use that outhouse for storing old tins of paint, Amy's bike, that sort of thing. You don't keep it locked? No, there's nothing worth having away. Anyone could have gone into that yard and done it. How would they have known the outhouse was open? And why run the risk of meeting one of you? Well, the even bigger is of stashing incriminating evidence in a stranger's backyard, knowing they'd have to retrieve it. I really don't like where you're going with this. And where's that, Miss Barlow? Oh... <sighs> If I'd done Tina in and then gone and stolen a load of gear from her flat, do you think I'd be swanning around wearing a bracelet on my wrist? No, I wouldn't. And you know I wouldn't. Plus, we all have people who can say where we were when it happened. Have you spoken to Peter yet? So I guess I'll uh, be in touch this afternoon, yeah? No problem. Cheers. Thanks. Hey. What's going on? Just been for a viewing, Victoria Court. Very nice. If I had a cat, I could actually swing it. Um, so I'm putting in an offer. There's no need to do this on my account. There's every need, and it's entirely on your account. I'm sick and tired of sleeping in the same bed as we used to, and sitting on the same couch, eating from the same plate. You catch my drift? Yes, fair enough. Mm. So anyway, it's a vacant possession, and um, no, that means I should be in there before too long. So it'd be okay if I move back in. Once I'm gone, yeah, you can do what you like. Right. I don't suppose you know anything about this stolen bracelet, do you? No. Only that Deirdre found it in the backyard. I hope you're breaking the habit of a lifetime and telling me the truth once. I am telling you the truth, I promise. You made me a lot of promises. Cheek coming in here throwing accusations about. Well, they never accused anyone, Trace. Oh, come on, Rob. You heard them. They obviously think somebody in our house has done it. Well, if it wasn't me, you and Deirdre, then who does that leave, eh? Oh, and the condemned man ate a hearty meal. You what? Can we go see Dad? Uh, no, sorry, we can't. We need to tidy up at home. We don't want Sophie thinking we live in a pit, do we? Look, everyone knows that you killed Tina, so why don't you do a sort of favour and hand yourself in? Use your choke chain, oh, will you? I'm asking you to do the decent thing for once in your life and, and save your family a load of aggro. Well, then just get out my face. Oh, that's it, Peter. Yeah, walk away, just like you always do. Wait. I need a word. What do you want? Peter Barlow, I'm arresting you on suspicion of the murder of Tina McIntyre. What? You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention, when question something you later rely on in court. Anything Dad, you do say may be used in evidence. It's all right, Si. This is a mistake. No! 
Si, come Leave on. Him alone. Si, there's nothing we can do. Let's go on. Come on. It's all right, son. It's all right. That was my kid. I'm sorry the car's waiting. This is ridiculous. I haven't done anything wrong. The penny seems to have dropped at last. <laughs> you, you must be relieved. I've been dreading this. It was inevitable. Oh, and I bet you're really pleased, aren't you? Because it gets our Lady of Underworld off the hook. Carla's innocent. He's guilty. Oh, I just... I can't get my head round him being a killer. I mean, I've lived among murderers. I think I'd know one if I saw one. And, uh, it would end in tears. I just never thought that... I should have done something about it. What could you have done, love? What could any of us? When Tina's mind was set... <sighs> Well, if it was Peter, I hope he never sees the light of day. He's wrecked so many lives. We ought to get started. Is that her bag? I've never done anything like this, so... Come on. We'll get through this. This is the last favour we can do for Tina. A herd of flipping rhinos couldn't have made more mess. They've got no respect. Mum. There's not a thing in that kitchen where it should be. It feels like a flipping holiday let. Mum, something's happened. Oh, not to your dad. No, no, it's... It's Peter. He's been arrested for Tina's murder. Do you want me to go and phone Dad? No. Uh, no, no, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Um, I'm, I just, um, I'll just finish up here. Um, no, it's all right. We can do that. No, I'd be happier doing it myself because I'm not going to be able to rest until everything's back where it should be. It's all right, ma'am. It's all right. It's not all right. When's it all going to end? He looked me in the eye and he told me he was innocent. That can't have been a lie. So how do you explain the charm being in the outhouse? I can't, because I didn't put it there. I wasn't even living over there at the time. But you would have known Mr and Mrs Barlow left their outhouse unlocked. Yeah, uh, maybe. So what? So you would have known there was somewhere to hide the items you stole from the flat? Somewhere you could easily return to without causing suspicion. Listen, you, you, can, you can concoct all the stories you like, OK? But I didn't do it. But you agree the bracelet must have been in the outhouse at some point? Yeah, it looks that way. A bracelet that has your fingerprints on it? Well, I must have picked it up, you know, when it was lying around the house. Do you know why you might have been handling the bracelet? Well, I've just said. I, you know, I don't recall doing it, but obviously I did. Try to remember, Peter, this is very important. What do you want me to say? But do you, do you want me to make something up? Because that would be the easiest thing in the world to do, but I'm trying to tell you the truth. Or you're not interested in that. The police arrested me, it doesn't mean I did it. True. But if what Rob's saying is right about this missing charm... Yeah, but even today he swore blind that he'd done nothing. Oh, since when did his word ever count for anything? I know. I know it. But you should see me. He seems so... Oh, I don't know. Show me a spinning with all this. Right, well, don't think about it, then. Just be glad that the police aren't hassling you anymore. He's like Miss McIntyre, quite plain at the funeral. Yeah. And I regret that. I'm sure you do. She was an inconvenience you wanted rid of. But I've never pretended otherwise, have I? I didn't want her in my life anymore, and I didn't want her to tell Carla about the affair. Guilty as charged. I'm a woman of the world, Peter. I can't imagine your wife's the easiest to live with, so you wanted a bolt hole. But things got out of hand. You needed to shut Tina up any way you could. I tried to reason with her, and she wasn't having it. Come on, look, we've been through all this. You admit you were a blazing row, and then she scratched your face. Then, a little while later, you're seen fleeing her flat in a state. A little while after that, she's found half dead. Look, I'm not stupid. I know what it looks like, but when I left that flat, Tina was alive, right? She was alive and kicking. So then what did you do? You know what I did? I went and told Carla everything. Something I'd only do if I thought Tina was going to tell her. So you said, but you didn't go straight to your wife. You were seen entering the ginnel, is that correct? Uh, yeah, I needed a smoke to calm my nerves down. 
Did anyone see you actually in the Ginnell? <sighs> no, not that I know of. I, I wasn't there long. You went to your father's outhouse, dropped off the stuff, and went back to the pub. That's what really happened, isn't it, Peter? <sighs> uh, no, it's not. You went back later, grabbed the evidence, but in the dark, in a hurry, you didn't see the top hat charm. And you dropped the bracelet by the gate. No, I didn't. So can someone account for your movements that night? Because we certainly couldn't find you. It's because I went out drinking. I'd had a shot. Come on. Where did you go drinking? I don't know. I can't remember. I was hammered. You can't remember much, can you, Peter? Or maybe you just don't want to. Background, the timeline, the physical evidence in the outhouse, it all points one way. Yeah? Well, maybe you've got to work a bit harder then because it's the wrong way. Then give us something to work with. A reason to disregard everything else we've managed to uncover because so far you've not done yourself any favours. That's not a question. You don't have to respond to that. You know what, she, uh... She meant a lot to me, Tina. For a while. Everything else crashing down around me ears and... When I was with her, it seemed miles away. Like it was somebody else's problem. And life seemed easy. Until she chose to complicate it. By wanting more. You know, what I'm trying to get across is... You know, no matter how much I wanted Tina out of my life, I, I cared about her. You know, I would never have hurt her, not in that way. I just, I would never have hurt her. For the benefit of the tape, PC and me has asked to speak to myself and Detective Sergeant Hawthorne. Interview paused at 2029. Excuse us. <clears throat> Put that box for Tina's mother in the post tomorrow. Well, I can do it for you. No, no, you've done more than enough. Ah, Tina was my friend as well. You know, you've not got a monopoly. Besides, I've nothing else to do with my time. <laughs> All right, well, that's very good of you. Thank oh, you. Well, I'll drop it off at yours for now, and uh, I'll pick it up for in the morning, if that's all right. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> Will you have a brew? Oh, well, if you're offering. Uh, but I don't want to keep you up. Oh. I don't think I'll get off to sleep yet. You know, tonight's really brought it home. Parceling up a young girl's jewellery and her clothes and her little keepsakes. Tina is not in her earrings or her <laughs> trinket boxes. She's in the hearts of everyone who loved her. That's where she'd live on. Thank you. Do you know, I don't know what I'd have done without you the last few weeks. Well, you just need a bit of a hug. And if it weren't for this box... Put the box down. Where's your mum? Oh, she's gone for a kit, bless her. Cheers, babe. Did she say how your dad took it? He was quiet, apparently. Didn't know what to say. Is he coming home? Oh, who knows? He's got a grandson at death's door and a son arrested for murder. I mean, talk about Sophie's choice. <sighs> Poor dad. It'll break him if Peter gets sent down. Oh, and as for Simon, I mean, his life's ruined before it's even begun. This is such a mess. You're getting way ahead of yourself, Trace. They haven't even convicted Peter yet. Yeah, well, you have. I'm only guessing, same as the police. I, I don't know, did it? Not for certain. How could I? Where are they? If they're much longer, I'll make some inquiries. So how long are they allowed to hold me for? It depends. Given the nature of the offence, they can detain you without charge for anything up to 96 hours. 96 hours? Sorry about that. If you can sit yourself down, Peter. <laughs> Interview with Peter Barlow resumed at 21.32. Detective Constable Vanner and Detective Sergeant Hawthorne are the interviewing officers. We've been waiting nearly an hour. This is totally unacceptable. We were with forensics. In addition to the missing charm, we also found traces of dry blood in your father's outhouse. These have now been analysed and they match a sample taken from Tina McIntyre. In light of this, do you want to revise or add to anything you've told us so far?
all right? In addition to the mountain of circumstantial evidence against you, we now have strong reason to believe the murder weapon was concealed in the outhouse at number one Coronation Street, along with goods stolen from Miss McIntyre's flat. Goods that include a bracelet with your fingerprints all over it. So I'll ask you again, Peter. Is there anything else you want to tell us? No. I've told you everything I know. Interview terminated, 21.35. So is that it? No, we need you to accompany us downstairs to the charge desk. What did you say? Are you charging me? We've spoken to CPS. So if you'd like to follow me. No, 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 you, you can't do this. Look, I, I've told you, right? You've, you've got the wrong man. Ask your client to comply, please. What you need to do as they ask, Peter. Well, you expect me to go calmly downstairs while they put a noose around me neck? No way, no way! You can't do this! You can't do this! So what will happen to him now? Uh, Peter, he'll, uh, he'll be in court today sometime. Today? Well, they don't mess around when it comes to a murder charge. I want to go along. Well, th th there's not much to see. It, it's not a trial. You, you won't hear any evidence. Will you come with me? Well, if you want me there, yeah. Look, Deirdre, it, it's great that you're being so loyal, but don't you think it's time that you started facing facts? I mean, for, for the police to to actually charge him, that they must have some pretty damning evidence. I'm gonna go and get ready. Where are you going? Just walk Eccles. Are you okay? This is hard for me as well, you know. I hate seeing you and Deirdre upset. Okay. Yep. I'm in fine settle. Where to go? Something she knows. Not having, it's not what she knows about the arrest. Eccles! Yeah, you can uh, take her for a little walk if you like. Just as long as you're quick, yeah? Um, have you heard anything about Peter? He's been charged, Liam. No. He swore to Simon he didn't do it. He said the police had sought it out. I mean, why do that? Why lie to a little boy? Hasn't he been through enough? Haven't we all? I know, I'm sorry. Julie! Julie! At all? What are you listening to? Oh, Heidi Thomas's Conversational French volume. Ah, oh, I've downloaded the whole course. I'm listening to it on my way to work. Mm, it's only a short walk. We'll download this. Peter's been charged. Yeah, but just because he's been arrested doesn't actually mean I it. think it does mean Well, whatever it means, I'm sure Carla would sooner we got on with our sewing. We've got a... Oh, so I take it you've heard the news then? Mm, gives me the creeps, knowing that a killer like that was in this building. Yeah, well, Beth, the only person you really need to be frightened of is me, so get stitching. Go on. to France then? Is that why you're learning the language? No. Well, I might. No, it's just one of the three things that I intend to do before I hit the big 4-0. Oh, yeah. Climb Snowden, master shoe pastry, and learn foreign language. I think you are calling an apology. You wanted her arrested. I want serious. She knows that. I should warn you, there could be a lot of hanging around today. You'll be going from here to court and then straight to prison. Thank you. That's definitely the way I'm heading, you think? This is a murder case. You'll be taken to the magistrate's court sometime this morning. 
The case will be sent up to the Crown Court and you'll be remanded in custody until the trial. I thought I was innocent until proven guilty. You are. So can't we just try for bail? Because I'm pleading not guilty. Y you know that. It's highly unlikely you get bail. <sighs> oh, come on. I liked this when it was in the shop, but now I think it looks a bit dark, you know, a bit Halloween-y. You don't go to the court dressed like that, are you? Well, why not? It's not me in the dock. Anyway, I reckon we'll be in and out of there in five minutes. Will we be able to see him? I mean, talk to him. But it's not a trial. I keep telling you, though, just identify him and then send him back to prison. Well, I'm still going. Should we get a cab? I, I don't want to get on the bus. It, oh, look, if you're that hell-bent on going, then I'll, I'll run you both down there, all right? Oh. I know you never liked Peter, but he is part of the family. Yeah, yeah, of course. No, I'd, I'd do anything I can to help, all right? Just can't stand by and watch you humiliate yourself again. Save your breath, Norris. I'm seeing him later. He's taking me for a drink. He's taking you for a ride. Hiya. Hi. Uh, I'll just have these mints, please, Rita. All right, though. Well. I'll get a couple of magazines, you know, in case we're hanging about. OK. Where are I going to see Peter in court? They've charged him, I gather. Yeah, well, I hope they lock him up and throw away the key. Yeah, all right, Judge Cole, if we wanted your opinion, we'd ask for it. Am I not allowed to be pleased that justice has been done? That girl, well, she was practically family to Rita. A, a young woman in her 20s all with right, a whole I, life ahead of I her. I said shut it, all right? We don't care what you think about anything, so just, just keep your trap shut, all right? Well, that was short and sweet, wasn't it? Just say your name on your way. This is like a bad dream. I don't know why, but I just... I just got it into my head, you know, that once I stood up in court, the judge would look at me and say, oh, what's he doing here? He's not a murderer. They've only allowed a brief meeting now. You'll be taken to prison from here, but I can meet with you again there. So how long will it be till I go on trial? Around three months. And, and until then, I'll, I'll be locked up? I'm afraid so. The CPS won't want any delay. Hopefully the case will come to court soon. Yeah. Come on, is that supposed to make me feel better? We'll get the best barrister we can to put your defence forward. That's assuming you do plead not guilty. What? Of course I'm going to plead not guilty. I didn't do it. Well, let's wait and see what the evidence is against you. There may be an option of pleading guilty to a lesser offence. You do believe I'm innocent, don't you? Of course. You don't, do you? Of course you don't, because this is just a job to you. This is my life! Peter. No, no, I mean it. I want people on my side who believe in me, people who fight for me, not somebody who's going to haggle and try and cut a deal. I'm innocent. You sacked. I don't want you to represent me, okay? All right? Uh, red wine, please. No. God, I, I'm meant to be cutting back, especially in the day. I'll have fizzy water. All right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm holding up someone. Peter's in court. Tracy and Deirdre have gone to watch. Mm, wish I'd have known. Could have cheered when they send him down. That's all the girls can talk about. With the day they can talk about someone else. Fat chance of Pete's getting tried. Listen, you will get past this, you know, in time. I just can't believe that the man I fell in love with, the man I married, is capable of murdering a young girl. I mean, Beth Tinker called him a killer. Really hit home, you know. I didn't know what was going on right under my nose, let alone what was going on in Peter's head. Listen, Peter is a wino. He's not a psycho. I mean... I don't think he'd have done half the stuff he'd done had it not been for the booze. It changes people, doesn't it? It makes them do terrible things. Peter did terrible things when he was sober. Here we go. Hey, Mrs. Collar, uh, I was hoping to get you on your own. Why would you want to do that? I never really thought you did it. Oh, thanks, Beth. Now I can sleep at night. Oh, I mean, when the finger was pointing at that, I sh should have spoke up a bit sooner. I know that, but... I never really doubted you. Right, well, time for that. 
think you were due back at your machine five minutes ago, weren't you? the applications for the PA job and there's really only one candidate I can see that sticks out. I'd like to see them for an interview. Do you want me to phone them up? It's you you'd have to hear with. Me? No, well, I will need to interview you though. Oh, right, when? Now. Sit down. So, question one. How many sugars do you have in my tea? Uh, we don't drink tea. Correct. What's the most popular line? Sorrento briefs? Yes, yes. Where do you see yourself in five years, Sal? Here? Committed, I'd like it a lot. You've got the job and you can start today. So, first things first, go through those, give them a bell and tell them the bad news. Secondly, we'll go through terms and conditions, you know, over a nice bottle of Prosecco. Is that okay? Oh, Carla, that's great. Thank you. I'd just like to say I think the way you've helped... Yeah, um, make the call, Sal. to remember is he still loves you, okay? Can he phone you up? Can he invite you? Is he okay? No, he's really quiet. I'm, I'm worried about him. Do you want to have a word with him? Well, I don't know what you can say that I haven't. Hey, Billy. Uh, look, I've got Need for Speed, the rivals. On PS4, do you want to come around tomorrow? Yeah. Oh, good. Well, look, why not pick you up after school and we can have a proper session? Great. Sorry, wait, you can let yourself in. I'll be there in a minute, yeah? See? We can be civil when we want to be. Yeah, I know. All this business with Peter, it just makes you realise how childish we're being. Yeah. <sighs> Changing the name of the bistro, do you really think you could airbrush me out of the picture? I'm drawing a line in the sand, OK? Before your solicitor demands his pound of flesh. Well, I wouldn't have needed a solicitor if you hadn't been so unreasonable. You lost your claim when you jumped into bed with Soldier Boy. You know, one name I can't wait to change. Me own. Because you're a batter's bee, aren't you? Andrew it all. What's wrong with your mother? Not today or in general. Peter sacked his solicitor. What? Yeah, she rang the office for an update and apparently Peter no longer requires his services. But why? Perhaps he's thrown in the towel. Yeah. Yeah, he must have. Well, maybe it's a positive thing. If he's no longer lying, then he'll get a lighter sentence. True. Right, then. Well, I'll, um, just tidy this up before we go. No, it's all right. I'll do it when we get back. No, no, I don't like leaving it out. Um... Ma'am, will you just relax? I don't want to go. This is Peter we're talking about. Whatever he has or hasn't done, we've got to stick by him. You know, even if he killed that girl in cold blood, we still love him, don't we? Of course we do. It's Dad. Oh, um, give me that. What did you do that for? Well, um... I'll ring him later. We, we haven't got time now. Come on, let's go. Okay, yeah, that's fun. So, have you met anyone nice in here? No. Well, no, it's a perfectly legitimate question. You get all sorts finishing up in here. No, I haven't met anyone nice. Um, I rang, um, I rang your solicitor this morning. Don't have one. No, that's what I discovered. You've been accused of murder and you don't want legal help. It was a waste of time. Are you pleading guilty? Guilty? Peter, you got rid of your solicitor. We thought you'd given up. I fired my solicitor because he wanted me to plead guilty. You both think I did it, don't you? Well, what are we meant to think? If you didn't do it, why did you get rid of your solicitor? I've just told you. 
did you? Or did you not kill Tina? Tracy. Do you really think I could do that? What if she comes in? Well, she won't. She's at work. Simon, do you want some crisps? Do you know, it is polite to say no thank you. Well, you're a natural. Yeah, well, I'd like to see you do better. Yeah, I'll get him talking. Give him ten minutes with me, he'll be chattering like a madman. All right, then. I'll split my five-pound bonus with you. Oh, come on, he doesn't like being talked about when he's stood right there. He's not a game show, he's an 11-year-old boy. you've said the bracelet the sacking of the solicitor there's a reason why you sat that side of the table peter that's enough tracy in fact if that's what you both think why are you even here you should get back to amy peter sit down this visit's over i'm finished here mate mate i need your help rachel <laughs> I reckon Iron Man's better than this, don't you, Si? I said, I think that Iron Man's better than this, don't you? Well, I think they're both as rubbish as each other, if you're asking me. Yeah, well, nothing's as rubbish as playing pretend soldiers in a pretend war on a screen the size of a stamp. Yes. No, 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 no. no. Oh, I missed that one. How'd it go? Oh, total disaster. He's got skin like porridge. He's got bags under his eyes. I tried to give him some advice. Like what? Like how to get out of prison as soon as possible. Robbie flipped, and he basically flung us out. Well, I... Uh... I hate to say it, but along with sacking his solicitor, that sounds like the behaviour of a guilty man. Oh, just leave it out, will you? Seriously, after the day we've had, just look at my mum. I think it brought back bad memories. I'm fine. Listen, why don't I go and run you a bath, eh? And because there's nothing in them cupboards, we could go to the Rovers for our tea. I couldn't face it, not with everybody whispering. Well, we'll show them that we're not hiding away. That is exactly what I want to do. Come on. I'm really worried about her. Yeah, but you're, you're bearing up, really. I mean, it, it takes more than this to break Tracy Barr, though. Trace? I don't know. Peter's always been there for me when I've been the one that everybody hates. He's always stood by me. And what if he does get sent down? I'm going to be the one left propping everybody up. My mum, my dad, Amy, Simon. I mean, what happens if I'm not strong yeah, enough? Yeah, yeah. I'm right next to you, remember? Because you chose the game. OK, well, next time you can choose the game, I will still <laughs> kick your butt and you will see that I'm undefeatable. There's even games my dad can't beat me on. Great, that didn't last longer, did it? Mm. You're the daffest, and you've got more out of him in the last half hour than his family have in days. Yeah, well, little boys with mashed up heads are about the only people I seem to get on with, and vice versa. That is not true. You get on with me, sometimes. <laughs> I've kept him till Leanne got back. Ooh, she said to drop him at his grand's. <laughs> oh, look like you got a bit of competition there, Mads. <laughs> I'm amazed a woman of your experience could be so stupid. Stupid? Oh, God, I wish Rob had come with us. Mum, we are having a butty in our local. We don't need a bodyguard. How are you, Deirdre? It's lovely to see you up and about, considering. Steve, we'll have a bottle of red wine, please. And what have you got to eat? How is he, then? Thanks for asking, Steve. Ah, uh, it's not good. Yep. Right. Mary, Norris, seems that you're all here. It will save me having to put up a massive billboard by the bus stop. 
Peter is a Barlow, so me, my mum, my dad and Amy, all of us will be standing by him. So if anybody's got anything to say, you can come and see me. There's no need for that. We're just concerned about Deirdre, that's all. Well, I would worry about your husband if I were you, you know. Dodgy Dennis. Thief, fraud, cheat, tramp. Yeah, really good catch. I am sitting here, you know. Tracy. Auntie Emily, I'm sure that Peter will be at the top of your church prayer list this Sunday. But as for the rest of you, wind your flaming necks in. Tracy. You see, I'm not the only one that thinks you're Too full hot, where hot, please, he's please, Steve. For the last time, keep your nose out of my business. You know, you're right. <laughs> it really is none of my business. Good luck. Nothing from Peter. Oh, well, I'd be grateful if I were you. If he sent us something through the post, I'd probably call the bomb squad. That's not funny, Tracy. Well, maybe not, but she's got a point. Peter's made his position pretty clear. Oh. Oh, what is it? Well, it's from Weatherfield British Legion, asking Ken to attend a commemoration ceremony for the start of World War I. Well, I knew he was getting on a bit, but... No, it's to represent Uncle Albert. He won a military medal, you know. We did the Great War, it's called. Was Uncle Albert a hero? Well, yeah. I think we've got his medal kicking about in the house somewhere. He was a miserable beggar, as far as I can remember. Not that I could ever understand a word he was saying. Could I see his medal? I could take it into show and tell tomorrow. I, I don't know, darling. I'm a bit pushed. Oh, go on. Please. Mrs Lockett would be well impressed. No. Go on, then. I'll try and dig it out. I'm not promising anything, though. So, uh, what did he do to win it? He saved the lives of two men, apparently. Oh, really? Well, that means the family breaks even in my books. Well, they have to let Peter out now. You're quiet this morning. Don't have much option. <laughs> Sorry, I know. I can go on. I had one cellmate top himself. That I can believe. Lost his appeal, took it hard. I tried cheering him up, but... Well, I guess some people are cut out for prison and some people aren't. So what's your secret, then? I've always been the same. I can talk to anybody, me. Regardless of whether they want to talk to you. <laughs> I'll wear everybody down eventually. But don't worry, pal. I won't be here long. I'm coming to trial soon and I'm going to walk. Yeah. Nailed on. It should never have got this far. No offence, but I'm looking forward to seeing my family. So, who's waiting for you in the big wide world? Nobody. They must have some family, someone who wants to visit. No, oh, even if they did, I wouldn't want to see them. If I were you, I wouldn't go touching too many bridges. If you're on a long stretch, you're going to need all Let's the... Just leave. Yeah, all right. But if you do feel like talking, and not hard to track down, Take an early retirement or what? Well, you've got to look good for your punters, right, ma'am? What colour shall I wear? Uh, bone china or movie idol? Well, I reckon both. Then you could call it bone idol. There's no talking to you today. I can't help worrying about Peter. Yeah, well, I'm worried about him too, but life goes on, ma'am. I couldn't find it in the front room. Why are you both getting in such a flap about this medal? Amy will have forgotten about it by tonight. Yeah, and maybe she won't have. Look, she was genuinely interested. You should be encouraging her. Since when were you so bothered about her education? I don't like letting her down, that's all. No. Oh. Um. oh, here we go. Don't get too excited. It's probably his teeth. <laughs> there. What, that's it? That bit of old tar? That was him worse nick than Albert was, and that is saying something. Just needs a bit of TLC, that. Hey, I've got some metal polish in the shop. I'll, I'll bring it home. Oh, thanks, love. Yeah, a bit of brasso would bring that up. Lovely. Mm. It meant a lot to him, did that? Yeah, to him, maybe. Nobody else would care. Hey, you'd be surprised. People are really into this stuff. Things like this can be quite valuable, you know, especially with the centenary coming up. Lunchtime, time where Grandad is. Yeah, yeah, something like that, yeah. So am I OK, too? Oh, go on, then. But listen, I've told you all you need to know. Uncle Albert was a cranky old codger who wore cardigans that stank of cabbage. That is no way to talk about a war hero. I speak as I find. 
People don't want the truth. Oh, no, I, I'd love the truth. So, come on, where were you this afternoon? Well, I could tell you, but it's... A surprise, yeah, yeah, I know, but being honest, I don't like surprises, so come on, let's have it. No, oh, I'm sorry, you're going to have to wait. Oh, what a day. I could never be a doctor, mate. Sick people do nothing but complain. My mum is Weatherfield's answer to Florence Nightingale. <laughs> Florence Nightingale didn't have to listen to Norris moaning about his septic toe. <sighs> what are you doing there, lovey? I was just Skyping Grandad in Canada. <gasps> no! <laughs> you all right? Yeah. I've just seen the wife. Well, I couldn't miss her, really. She always puts timber on when I'm inside. Does she? Comfort eating, that's what it is. We soon work it off when I get out. Right. Listen, mate, I'm, uh, I'm sorry about earlier if I was off with you. Forget it. I had one cellmate put a shaving razor to me throat. Yeah? Seriously? Could have been worse. It were only a disposable. And it left a little plastic clip on the front. It wasn't the brightest of lads. not you. It's, it's this place. Well, you'll get used to it in time. I don't want to get used to it. You know, I, sh I shouldn't even be here. But you are, mate. And however hard you bang your head against these walls, they are not going to disappear. You've got to make the best of it. <laughs> well, yeah, well, that's easier said than done. Well, it might be a sight less difficult with the odd friendly face coming to visit. If you're going to survive in here, you need something to hold on to out there. I know. No, you don't. My family think I'm guilty. Well, I mean, I say that, I don't know what my dad thinks at all. Some people, they find it hard. No, to don't, don't, don't make excuses for him. Listen, if he's washed his hands of me, fine. It's fine. I don't need him. I don't need any of them. Why can't Amy talk to him? Well, he's just got a lot on his plate at the moment. I don't want her pestering him. He loves hearing from her. He'll still be in bed. <laughs> well, only if he's dead. No, is everything all right, dear? Jim? Yes, it, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. I, I just don't want her bothering him. Yeah, well, so you keep saying, but what I want to know is, why? Right, well, I'm going to have to ring him. No, you can't. I can, and I will, unless you... I haven't told him. I haven't told him about Peter being arrested. I... I haven't told him any of it. Don't badger her. He needs to know, ma'am. He's never going to forgive himself when he realises he's been over there living it up when his son needed him. Your father's never lived it up in his life. Does he even know about Tina dying? It's not the sort of phone conversation that you have, transatlantic. Well, what about Carla and the baby? Oh, well, that was a whole can of worms. I just couldn't bring myself to open. Oh, well, what in God's name do you talk about with him? The weather, the neighbours, what I've watched on the telly. That's enough, Trace. Just leave her alone. Right. Well, if you're not going to tell him, I'll do it. Where's the number? No. I'll do it. Right. Well, good. So go on, then. Chop, chop. You can finish the spots. I'm just on my nails. Well, it wasn't here, wasn't it? We can't find the medal. Shh. Not now, Amy. You can have your tea in a bit. Eavesdroppers never hear anything good about themselves. That's what Nana Blanche said. <laughs> oh, please. Nana Blanche listened into more private conversations than MI6. What did he say? Oh, you could at least have switched the oven on. Have you, uh, have you seen that medal, Deirdre? You've not told him, have you? No. Why, well, he was so upset about Peter's drinking, I just couldn't bring myself to tell him about the rest. Mum! Anyway, it looks as if Adam's on the mend, so he's going to be booking his flight home. Oh, well, that is great. Cooking is getting worse. I've still got a bit of that pie crust stuck to the top of my mouth. So where's the medal? What? That I know you. You can look me in the eye when I was asking you about it. Why do I always get the blame for everything? <laughs> OK, then. I sold it. <laughs> well, it's been in the back of that drawer for years. 
And now we can put the money towards our wedding. Hey, we could get that helicopter. Oh, forget about the helicopter. Look, that was a family heirloom. Oh, well, hardly. I only got a few hundred quid for well, it. You know how much that meant to your dad, to Deirdre. We'll hark at you, Mr. Moral High Ground. Anyway, what do you care? And it's done now. Can we at least get some crisps? Try and take the taste of this minging pie away? No. No, look, we are going to finish these and we are going straight back home and you can tell your mum exactly what you just told me. You sold it! It was gathering dust! It's just a bit of skanky old metal! You are so lucky your dad's not here. Do you know what Uncle Albert went through during the war? Yeah, I mean, I do, but... Well, he's not here now, is he? Which is why that medal is so precious to your dad and to me. And it should be to you if you weren't so heartless. Men like Uncle Albert fought and, and suffered for years in misery just so that people like you could waste your lives jiggling your iPods and fretting about getting your nails done. You should be ashamed of yourself, Trace. Oh, who are you, my dad? I don't care what you do and I don't care how long it takes. You get that medal back. Otherwise, I'm not only throwing you out of this house, I will never speak to you again.